Baku gum bro, it's a big bro. Baku gum, Baku gum bro, it's for it all. Hello, YouTubers. I am Chef of the Game Capital, and welcome to a Bakugan unboxing video here on the Game Capital channel. If you have not already heard, Bakugan is back and potentially bigger, better, better than ever with Bakugan Battle Planet. Today I've got the starter set, which includes three Bakugan each and a 40 card deck. So let's get these cracked open and uh, see what we've got working out for us here. And now uh, we should be having these in stock. Uh, a variety of Bakugan procs in stock on our shelves very soon in our physical storefront, The Game Capital. So, we've got a total of not one, not two, but three different Bakugan Battle Brawlers starter sets. Each has three Bakugan, one being a Bakugan Ultra, two regular Bakugan, and then you also have six Baku, car, Baku Cores and a 40 card deck. Now, spoiler, I have already opened these and got them sleeved. Um, so this will be kind of easy or more time efficient. So I'll actually get these all fully out of the box though for you to take a look at. But just so you know I'm not making stuff up. Uh, once I get these out here, you can see that, yes, I've, I've got the sleeve cards already in there. So we're, we're good to rock, but let's get, let's get laid out, make it a little bit more easy, a little more efficient, and let's show you what each of these starter sets is packing, shall we? Hope this gives you a more clear uh, vision of what each deck actually has for you. And something I didn't realize when I first opened them and got them sleeved is that with the exception of uh, the one on our left here in the pink sleeves, uh, since that one has an Aurelis, I'm, I'm not positive I pronounced that one. I know it's like the replacement of Subterra, but doesn't have uh, support necessarily right now. So that deck, since it has an Aurelis one included, um, Aurelis, Aurelis. I'm going with Aurelis, I don't know. It could be wrong, my apologies. Uh, but since that one isn't there, it's basically a two color deck with just Pyrus and Chaos. Um, the other two decks each have three colors and three colors of support in the decks. However, each of them has one color that has a lot less support than the other two, which I found interesting. And in one of them, the color with the least support is actually the um, Bakugan Ultra that's in there. So uh, without further ado though, let's just start showing you, I'm gonna show you each of the decks first and then I'll show you each of the Bakugan popped open because I want to reposition the camera for that, give you a more close up look of how that all looks, I guess. So, so we'll start off here with the deck that includes, I got, I'm not used to this two camera thing either, so bear with me here. So we've got Dragonoid, Pegatrix, and Howlcore Ultra. Those are our three Bakugan, with obviously the Howlcore being the Ultra in this deck. And so all of these cards are gonna be either Pyrus based or um, Chaos based, other than the um, Pegatrix, Pegatrix Evo. So we've got just one Hyper Dragonoid, which is only a one cost to play. And we've got two Hyper Pegatrix. And FYI, the Evos go in the deck, the character cards do not. So the first three cards I showed you would not go in the actual deck, which is 40 cards. And FYI, in the new game of Bakugan, you win by decking out your opponent and dealing damage. Um, if there's demand for it, I can try to do a how to play video as well on this channel. Let me know if you want that. I know other channels have such videos, but this one's such a box as well. So if you want to see me personally do some sort of tutorial how to play video, please let me know and I will try to make that happen if there is enough demand for it. So, two Hyper Pegatrix. Um, yeah, up in the right corner here, that's the cost to play the cards. I'm not gonna explain too much how all the cards work. I just wanna show you the contents, and at least until I have my own how to play video, um, there are other videos out there. So you can refer to those if you need to know the basics first. Um, if you wanna watch one of those videos before getting all the way through this one, that's completely fine. So again, two Hyper Pegatrix, and then two Titan Howlcore Ultras. Cobb a mouthful, five uh, cost to play, has 1300 B power, and would deal five damage. So. I'll explain a little, little bit as we go here. But yeah, that right there is how much damage it deals. The damage it deals is how many cards your opponent has to discard. And you'll see flip cards in a little bit here. Um, flip cards can help reduce that damage significantly. There could be attacks that do 20, 25, 30 damage. You may take one damage and have a flip card that would stop that damage in its tracks and not cause you to take any further damage from that attack. So. Um, like all card games, there will be, of course, some form of luck factor. There are various forms of skill 
in this game that will help set the more skillful players apart as well. So, on to the sport here for Pyrus. We've got Cycling Warmth times two. I'm not gonna read all the effects fully. Uh, you can pause and read them if you need to, um, but we'll kind of go through these potentially quickly, probably quicker as we get into the second and third deck especially. We got Drago's Fury times two. Fierce Boost times two. Hot Potato times two. A lot of these are times two in the deck. We got Inferno Wings, which you might notice has a little bit of an extra flair to it. That is a super rare. And let's see. So all the Evos in this deck are just regular rares. So I'll show you an awesome rare when it comes up here as well. And there we have a Magma Boost times two. Meteoric Lance. That does plus 11 damage, but does cost five to play. Two of that. Molten Helix times two. And then here are the flips for Pyrus. So we've got Block Growth. So you can see the flip effect is Stop. So it's either Aquos or Ventus. Once this card is revealed while taking damage, the damage you were taking at that time stops with that card. So if you're taking 20 damage, this is the first card you flip when you're taking damage. You got lucky. <laughs> if you are dealt 20 damage, this is the 20th card you got. Too bad, so sad, I guess. Uh, but again, this one only will block two different attribute types. So you got two of that one. You've got Block Outsiders. So Block Growth costs one, Block Outsiders costs three, and for the higher cost, you stop a lot more. This one stops everything that isn't Pyrus. So that one is a little bit more versatile and uh, kind of obvious why that one would cost a little bit more then. And then, like I said, there won't be any support in the deck for Arbalus because they don't seem to have cards for that. Again, I don't know all the details, did a little bit of research for doing the video here just to try to find a little more answers, but doesn't seem like there's any full answers yet. Seems like when there's another set or additional procs, then it'll like get more support, and it seems like it will be stronger overall. Um, just show you the character cards here once more from this one. So, Dragonoid, just 200 B power, but the Arbalest Pegatrix is 600 B power, and FY, um, the abilities that some have down there, they get those if they pick up the right kind of Baku core. And then Holocore Ultra, an Ultra has 300 B power. So the Arlis one has more B power than the other two in this deck combined. I don't know if that's normal or if the Arlis ones are always have a lot of extra power, but it remains to be seen for now because this is the only Arlis one I have unboxed right now. This is the first unboxing I'm doing. I do have other Baku on product on hand, but I uh, don't have it opened just yet. So, anyways, on to the Chaos support. We've got Binding Go, Binding Glam, what was that, Golem? <laughs> so used to Pokemon. Binding Glam times two. Consort times two. Light's Courage times two. Philomena Dusk, so there is a super rare for the deck as well. And we've got Shine times two. Stoic Shot times two. And then for the flips, Halt Outsiders costs three, much like the one that stopped all Pyrus in the Pyrus support. This one stops all non chaos So you got two of those for a cost of three, and for a cost of one, it stops only two different attribute types, Darkus and Aquos, as Halt Unknown. And then we've got another super rare, Stand Together. For a cost of four, it stops non chaos Domination. If you're Bakugan or holding the most Baku cores, this is free. So potentially costs nothing to play. And let's see, does this deck have any awesome rares? Or I, they don't stand out that much, but I know the other decks have them. This one probably did twist, missed it, but oh well. So that is what is all in the deck. That includes Dragonoid, namely. So let's move on to the second deck. Like I said, I'll show you all the Bakugan at once, uh, just because it'll be a little bit easier with camera setup and all that. So the second deck, if I can get it all picked up. And I'm sorry if my face leaves the face camera at times. Like I said, this is, this is all new to me with the double face, double camera action here. We'll take some adjustments, but we'll figure it out, we'll figure it out. So this deck, we've got an Aquos Fainzor. We've got a Chaos Nilius. So the Fainzor actually has 6 RB power like the Aurelis Pegatrix did, so they don't have to be Aurelis to have a high B power. Granted, the Pegatrix also had an ability to get more B power, potentially, and uh, deals more damage. This Fainzor only deals one damage. So the Nilius, 300 B power, five damage, and then the Hydrorus Ultra, 
300 B and five damage. And then, all right, so here right away, this is an awesome rare. It's kind of like a regular rare in Yu-Gi-Oh where just the text is foil and the text on the middle part here is also foil. Not sure how that picks up, but that is what an awesome rare looks like. Um, and FY, these, so English card number and then CC, I believe stands for character card and then Battle Brawlers, I believe. Um, so then AR, whoop, is awesome rare. SR is super rare. And RA is rare. And CO is common. So those are the rarities that you can find in the decks. Um, they're all, there's also hex foils in the booster packs. Those coming soon in future videos. So we've got the Hyper Fanzor. One of that in awesome rare form. We've got two super rare Hyper Nilius. Those have 500B, six damage, only cost two to play. Hyper Fanzor costs four to play, 1000B, three damage. And when you play it, you draw three cards, which normally in a card game, oh, draw three cards, that sounds amazing. But remember, in this game, you lose if you deck out. So drawing is a catch 22. You draw cards, you have more, more flexibility on things you can play, but you're also closer to losing. So it's very tricky and a lot of times you may not want to draw. So it's very interesting. Now we've got two Hyper Hydorus Ultra. Just, just rolls for half the ton. So two cost 600B and does six damage. So on to the support then. Just kind of page here. A lot of Aquos, very, very little chaos and then a good amount of Pyrus. And oddly, there was only one Hyper Aquos Fanzor, but all that blue support. But you have two Hyper Nilius in the deck, but very little Hayas support. So that's probably confusing most, based on the fact that Hyper Fanzor is the only one of, as far as the Evos go in this deck. I would assume that Aquos would be the lightest, but it seems to be the heaviest or close to it. But anyways. Oh, I guess I have the flip cards first for just this one. Okay. Minor, minor. All right. So, we've got Ebb and Flow. That, that is a saying, Ebb and Flow, if, if you don't know. So, you got one Ebb. We've got Greater Water Boost times two. Hurricane Slash times two. Inspire times two. Liquid Strike times two. We've got Mind Flood Super Rare. Does plus two damage and plus two damage for every other card you played this turn. So if you happen to play a lot of cards in the turn, it can provide you with a lot of extra damage, which always good, right? Unless they get a key flip card, of course. And we got tides times two. And then on to the flips. So seeing a theme here at Solidex. For cost of one, you can stop two different attribute types with counter aggression. And yep, for a cost of three, you can stop everything except for the attribute type that the card is for. So it just it just makes sense for you know cost. And then onto the chaos support, the limited chaos support, we got Colonel Armstrong Trip. When one of your Bakugan attacks, draw a card. Eh, like I said about drawing cards, bone defense plus 700 B power. Two of those. And then you got the flip light as a feather for three. Put this into your hand and draw a card. So, yeah. <laughs> I've, I don't know the rules well enough yet off the top of my head for like what cards are good. That one confuses me. But anyways, we've got fire boost times two. Fireball times two. Power ritual times two. Sifting ashes times two. Talon slash times two. And then the Pyrus, we've got Black Outsiders, which we had in the other deck as well. And then Spark, for cost of one, draw a card, then discard a card. All right, so that is the second deck. Get that picked back up right quick. And then page through the third deck. Take a little longer than I planned to. Probably gonna be like a 25 minute video or so in the end, but I felt it better to do them all in one instead of one at a time, because I'm going to swing during videos, I'll pump out that if I do three of these up front, it'll take me longer to get other videos, so I figured I'd get them all in one shot here for you, so you can see them all, all under one roof, if you will. So for the next deck here, we've got a Ventus Fainzor, so it does three damage, less B power than the Aquos one did, half the B power, triple the damage. We got Hydrus Darkus, so two of the same as the previous one, 
And then Garganoid Ultra, 300 B power, 5 damage. The Hydorus was 300 B power and 4 damage. And then for the Evos, we've got two Hyper Fainzors. We've got two Hyper Hydorus. And we've got two Titan Garganoid Ultras. Um, so this is the only deck of the three that has two of each of the Evos. Um, in the first one, there's only one Evo for Dragonoid. And the second one, there's only one evolution for Fainzor. So, uh, based on the Evos, you'd think support maybe is equal in this one, but page three, a lot of Ventus, a lot of Darkus, and then you've got four cards that are Aquos besides the Titan Garganoid Ultra. And I'm even more surprised at the fact that the Ultra of this deck is the um, attribute color that has the least support in the deck. So. Maybe once I actually get to playing some games, I'll see how much it may or may not matter. But it just seems weird to me. Granted, they are starter decks. They're not supposed to be like top tier out of the box, I'm sure. But it's still, it's very intriguing to me why they would do that. But maybe, maybe it'll make sense in the end. So we've got Invigorating Blast times two, Piercing Scream times two, minus four B, but you can use that on your Poland's Bakugan. It doesn't have to be on your own. Shock and Awe times just one. Is that a rare? That's a common. Interesting. Smash times two. Stomping Quake super rare times one. Cost seven to play. Does ten extra damage and is turbo. If you have the most energy cards in play, draw three cards. Again, draw, drawing cards just seems scary in this game. Energize this uncharged. Turn to energy. Two of those. And then for the Ventus flips, We've got two Forward Synthesis, Energize this Uncharged. So that's if you use this as your energy for the turn. Again, not explain all the rules in this video, but for many of you it probably makes sense, and if it doesn't, definitely look up a how to play video. If you want me to do one again, let me know. Repel Outsiders times two, cost three, repels everything that is in Ventus. Ooh, my focus got a little weird there. I think we're good, should be good. All right, on to Darkest, we've got Shine Out Riot times one. Night Lightning times one, that's an awesome rare. Prismatic Bolt times two. Smoke Armor times two. Stone Skin times two. Storm Generator times two. Terrify times two, minus six damage. That can definitely help alleviate the pain a little bit. We've got Cease Serenity, the one drop that stops two attribute types. And then for three, Cease Outsiders, Cease Outsiders Stops all non-darkest. And then the massive amount of support for Aquos. We've got two Ice Barriers and two Exhilarates, which lets you draw a card. So that is what all of the decks look like. Now we can take a look at the actual Bakugan for you guys. All right, hopefully this is a little bit better of you. Hopefully it works out okay, we shall see. So I'll go in the same order as I went through the decks. So we'll start with the Dragonoid deck and the same order that showed the character cards. So. First of all, Dragonoid. And then I'll just try to roll them over just so you guys can see how they all work. Well, here is the Dragonoid in closed ball form. Try to give you guys kind of a close up look of each one because some of you will care a lot about the balls and such. And FYI, all the regular Bakugan, they're the smaller size, two inch size when opened, I guess. And the Ultras are three inches when opened, is at least how they uh, seem to advertise it and such. Um, these are all very easy to close. There's no instructions for them. Whereas the Ultras, they all include instructions on how to do that. And actually, I want to show you guys here. Here's a checklist too, just to show you quick. Um, of everything that's currently available, it shows you all the colors as well. So there's all the Bakugan Ultras. So you can see the Hydrorus in the top there. Comes in every color but Ventus. And then um, Cyndius, for instance, only comes in Aquas and Darkus. Uh, down here. So you can pause there if you want and take a closer look at that. And then for the regular Bakugan. So let's see, three, six, nine. There's 11 different Bakugan Ultras and just eight different regular Bakugan at this time. Dragonoid, Hydrorus, Trox, Pegatrix, Serpentes, Fainzor, Nilius, and Mantanoid. So um, there's a Hydrorus Bakugan and a Bakugan Ultra of it. I think, let's see, Serpentes comes in both and oh there's actually a Trox Ultra as well. I'm not sure if I've seen an Ultra Trox out in the wild yet. But so I guess there's several that come in both forms. 
um, both regular bot gun and ultra. So there is some overlap, um, but some only come in either ultra or not ultra. So just wanted to show you that as well. Oh, and these starters also do include a trading card game rule book. I guess I'm page this quick. So if you do want to like kind of teach yourself from this video too, you can pause on each page and read at your leisure. So I'm not going to read through it with you or anything, but at least give you guys the option of, you know, seeing and reading the rules right here in this video. Make it a little bit easier for you guys potentially. So there is, there, there's how that, so each deck you have six Baku cores and you take turns laying down the Baku cores in the game to end up with 12 in the field of play as you can see there. The one thing I gotta figure out is how exactly you reasonably keep track of whose Baku cores are whose, you know, when the game ends. So, you know, you end up with what you arrived with. So, that's the one part I'm a little confused with. If uh, you have a good answer to that, let me know, because obviously you don't really sleeve the Baku cores. I think a lot of people are even sleeving the decks, but um, I like to sleeve my cards, so. And there's Terms of effects, Double Strike, Shadow Strike. I don't think any of the cards in these decks had those. Frost Strike, I didn't see in any of these. And then five different Baku core symbols there as well. And some more Terms. And there's also a free Bakugan fan hub app. So that is the rule book in its entirety. So I guess uh, the small ones I won't roll because I don't really need to. The ultras I'll try to roll because they kind of pop open and jump kind of a sort of I think. So so here is Dragonoid. Boom. So Dragonoid. Just give you a close little spin look there. And FYI. They do have the B-Powers on them as well. Um, it seems like the B-Power on the figure always matches the character card, which is good. I guess there's like a more simple like playground rules you can use where you don't have the decks or all the character cards, you just use the B-Power on the Bach gun or something. I didn't look into that too much, but I think that's a thing if I remember hearing right, but yeah. So, that is the Dragonoid. So on the box is just Dragonoid, because it's like the main attribute color for it, I think. So it doesn't even say Pyrus Dragonoid in the box. And I think um, that has to do with um, diamonds as well, which are the very hard to find, very rare, very expensive version of some of these Bakugan. So the Aurelis Pegatrix. Let's see, try to face the right way. Boom, oh, I failed. <laughs> so here is Pegatrix, all 600 B power of it. Spin that around for you. There's the B power on its behind. Very, very nice placement for that one, of course. So perhaps uh, it has some special hit abilities um, that involves gas or something. I don't know. Maybe, maybe. I, I did see the Hey Ass version of that in the um, cartoon series, anime, whatever you want to call it. I think I've, whatever episode that one first appeared in, that's how far I am as of this moment. I try to keep up with those kind of things. I will strike you up with like the Beyblade series because I will be doing Beyblade videos on this channel as well. Stay tuned. Um, actually, my background here, I've got a big Beyblade Stadium for hopefully a soon video. And hey, there's my face cam. Woo! <laughs> All the hacks. All right. Get back into position here. All right. So here is the Bakugan Ultra. This one is Howl Core. So, and this one is not exactly a ball. Um, so it's got three heads, which kind of stick out. So this one you kind of have to roll this way, otherwise it's, if you try to roll that way over the heads, it's not gonna work too well, like at all. So, let's see how I can do this behind camera here. All right, ready? Here we go. Woo! So there you see how it can jump and then actually attach it by the head. So, if that was like the actual game and my actual roll, the power I collected here, it would give it plus 600 B power, but minus three damage, so. More likely it would win the battle and do get to deal damage, but it would deal three less damage in the process. So pull that off its head for now and give you a look here at it. Guess this is the way I've been spinning on my, I think, maybe. And like I said, there are instructions um, that come with it to show you how to close these as the ultras are much more complex and the order of operations for closing them, a little bit more important. All right, so that is the first deck worth. Let's just move right on to the second one here. This will be Aquos Fainzor, I believe. Well, that one kind of jumped as well, but um, so yeah, it doesn't stand up, 
I'm just gonna put that back down right away. So, Fanzor, not a great way to show it, but there he is, Fanzor. So, probably one of my least favorite ones is just, there's very little to him. I mean, it's a snake. There's only so much you can do with a snake. And there is 600 B power. And a snake. God, gotta do it, gotta do it. Alright, uh, next up we've got Heas Nilius, which, for this one, maybe I don't have it closed right, but one of the heads there just likes to keep popping up. So, I don't know if this one's a little bit defective or if it's just not closed quite properly, but yeah, that, that one keeps trying to pop open a little bit. But here is the Heas Nilius two headed creature there. So, same color as the Ultra we just opened. Chaos, which originally I believe Chaos was more gray, if I remember right. So now it is pretty clearly white, and there is no gray or silver ones. And this one was where's B power on it? Uh, oh, on its tail there, 300 B power. And then the Ultra here is Pyrus Hydorus. I it just doesn't flow for me. Hydorus, Hydorus. I feel like there should be like. The r and flip like hydro wrists or something, but that's not the case. So, there's his head and stuff, but, whoops, that wasn't even on camera. His head's tucked in there. I think I got this one closed correctly, hopefully. So, let's see how this one does, if I can get to go. Boom! So, <laughs> he, it really could be just does a headstand. So, it seems like all the ultras, the magnets basically on top of their head. Just kind of interesting. I'm not sure there's a particular reason they do that, if maybe that helps like, with their defenses, if they're the first ones to the back cores, if it helps them like knock the other Bakugan all the, out of the way as well, perhaps. So if you roll them in fast enough and they collect Baku core, they kind of deflect the opponent and then they don't collect Baku core. That, that could be part of the strategy that could come into play. I could be wrong, but could be, could be. This one there, 300 B power. So again, this one, there is a non ultra version of this Bakugan as well. So there is that. So that completes the second deck. And then on to the third and final deck, we've got Ventus um, Fainzor. Boom. There is the snake. I don't, you gotta see the whole thing, right? I'm a snake. I can't do it on camera. I, I do it a lot better to annoy my wife, but anyways. We already saw Fainzor. That one was uh, 300 B power. Don't show that one in full detail because you already saw Fainzor. Then we've got Darkest. Hydorus, so here is the non-ultra version of Hydorus. So, there you go. It helps if I get it in camera, doesn't it? Got some nice little green teeth and green beady eyes. Let's see, where's the B power on this bad boy? Um, 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 where is it? Oh, it's really hidden. So it's it's down in there. 300 B power. Perhaps you can well, you can kind of see it through through his back end too, I guess. But kind of a weird place for that. But oh well. So let's show you side by side here. The darkest one is the non ultra, and the Pyrus is the ultra version. Both Hydorus, one ultra, one not. So about two inches opened, about three inches opened. You actually can see a spring in its back there even. All right, and then last but not least, with a challenge level of three for closing. Oh yeah, FYI, the back of the boxes here. I'm not, I'm in a weird position here, but Aqua with Garganoid, the challenge rating, I guess, is how hard they are to get back into ball form. It didn't seem that bad to me. I think I actually had the most trouble getting the Pyrus Hydrus closed. Um, but anyways, let's roll this one into action here and See if this one will stand on its head as well, I guess. Boom, wow, that was quite the flip. Maybe I'll, I'll show a slow motion of that or something. So that one catches it on its tail, I guess. Not exactly top of its head, but kind of has limited space there on top of its head. So I got plus two attack, woo! All right, so 300 B power for this very difficult to close Aquos Garganoid. So many legs, so I assume this is like an insect. I don't think this one's appeared in the show yet, for the point I'm at at least, but I could be mistaken. Maybe, maybe. But still, pretty cool looking Bakugan. And uh, 
I'll just show you here because I think I showed you the uh, the uh, hollow core one. Or no, here's the hollow core. So if you don't need to see directions, you can pause there, screenshot it, whatever you want to do. That's how that one looks. And then the Garganoid, which yeah, for a challenge of three, it only has 10 steps, as did the Howl Core. But then, oh, actually the Hydrorus has the fewest steps with nine, but it just, it just wasn't jiving for me too well. Like, I felt like I had to keep more stuff in place while I was closing it than with the other ones, where the other ones kind of like had part of, their parts snap into place as you went. But anyways, I digress. Hopefully that is a complete enough look for you guys. Looks like I'm over 30 minutes, I believe, or right around that, so. And it's still under 10 minutes or so per deck, so hopefully that's not too bad. If I did one at a time, it'd probably been like 10 to 15 minutes per video, so. Hopefully this works out for you guys okay, and hopefully you enjoy it. And if you did, please help share support and subscribe. Uh, smash that like button. Um, ring the bell to get notifications. I haven't done a lot of YouTubing lately, but I hope to be doing a lot more moving forward now. Possibly daily uploads. So definitely stay tuned for more. Um, we'll have Bakugan videos, Pokemon videos, Beyblade videos, Yu-Gi-Oh videos, maybe some Magic the Gathering. Basically anything that we offer in our store, the game capital, um, we will likely have videos for to some extent. Thank you for watching, and uh, I'll see you guys next time for another opening review of some sort. See you then.